All right, let's go ahead and get started with the show. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the most consistently inconsistent entertainment commentary podcast. I'm your host, Justin Sama. I'm here with my man, producer Plank. Hey, how you doing, sir? How's it going? Oh man, you know everything is everything. Uh, so me and Plank were uh, talking a little bit before the show, and we got to give uh, condolences to a to a king, you know, to a uh, to a legend, to an icon, Mr. Kevin Samuels. You know. Um, <laughs> I, I say all that ironically. I mean, you know, Kevin Samuels has some dope ass content here and there. Um, I didn't really care for. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I I thought everything he was saying in his "I'm gonna bash women" compilation or whatever. I thought they were all jokes. I I for real thought these women were calling in here, uh, calling into his show, and just pretending. Or I thought they were fake. I thought they were fake callers for sure. Uh, because there's no way, as a self-respecting woman, I mean, for me, if I was a self-respecting woman, there's no way I would call up to this man's show and admit all my faults and all my horrible, horrible things in a in a public forum. I just wouldn't do that. It's just, you know, mm. to, get, to get ridiculed on the internet? Absolutely not. Couldn't be me. I couldn't do it. So. Hey, man, rest in power to that man either way. Yes, sir. Rest in peace, King. Uh, you will be missed. Um, your content was absolutely necessary. Um, well, let me, let me say this with a caveat. I think the message was, uh, a message for this, this generation was absolutely needed. Uh, you know what I mean? The, some of the ways he did certain things was not, I just think uh, the delivery not was a, the best. Yeah. But here's the thing though. And he even talked about this, you know, if, if he tried to go with a very soft delivery, he wouldn't, he wouldn't go viral. People wouldn't pay attention. He wouldn't, he wouldn't get famous off of that. So. Uh, I mean, I agree. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm uh, I'm not here for it necessarily, but I kind of am. I mean, he definitely taught a lot of lessons at its core that seem to be very challenging for people to understand and wrap their minds around because all it looks like is, oh, you're just bashing on women and all this other stuff. And it's like, but did you listen, though? And it's like, no, you didn't. Okay. So thanks for admitting that. But... Anyway, yeah, yeah, rest in peace to that guy. I really wish he would have made more men's-based content instead of, like, doing stuff for women and against women all the time. Like, I yeah, really enjoyed I a lot of his, that. like, uh, cologne and shoes and suit videos. I really enjoyed those. And, like, watches and stuff like that. Actually, I started buying watches when I started wearing, watching uh, Kevin Samuels. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, like, maybe a year ago? Yeah, because this was, like, just before I met GTA, I started watching Kevin Samuels, and I was watching, like, a lot of his older content, like, when he first got on the platform. And um, when he was doing vlogs in his car, those, I was mm. really, really, really fucking with those videos and stuff like that. Um, he made me, watching his content had me upping my shoe game a little bit and buying more shoes, buying more uh, facial scrubs, uh, different type of bath soaps, shaving shaving my face a different way, uh, getting my hair cut a specific way. Um, I own more cologne, more shoes. I actually own a suit now. Uh, I own three, actually. Um, mm. Yeah, and just, like, different watches and stuff like that. Like, watching his content really made me go, like, damn, like, number one, because he was, like, rating all of these men and stuff like that, and I was like, oh, I'll be damned if, like, that's ever me. And so he introduced a bar that was so low for men. Like, like the fact that women will give you pussy for smelling good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like if you take a shower, a woman, there's a woman somewhere that will fuck you. I was like, that's wild. <laughs> like, that is crazy. like exposing that and like saying like, oh yeah, if you try this cologne, you'll be, you'll be getting pussy for days. And I'm like, all right, bet for sure. And I started wearing it and, you know, it didn't really work for me, but it, it had me, like, look for other colognes and stuff like that that would work for me. And, bro. You had to up your style game. Yeah, man. I had to I had to up a lot of stuff. So now I, I dress a little differently. And, you know, it's cool, man. I like it. I enjoy it. So thank oh, you, Kevin. That's Simon. absolutely great. But yeah. I'm fucking poor. So oh. I cannot. Oh. I'm dressing like a bum. Uh, yeah. the, and that's it. Damn. I'm dressing like a bum. I'm wearing fucking 
Let's see. I'm I'm gonna wear a sweatpants, some goddamn Jordans, and a hoodie. You know, well, you anything what else? You talking about you broke? Well, I didn't pay for them. Hmm. Hold on. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't. I, I can't really afford to to like go crazy in terms uh-huh. of like actual fashion or any of the things I really wanna explore. Mostly because I'm fucking obviously, like I said, I'm broke. Mm. But I, I obviously, I've been watching, even me, I, I watched a few videos on, on not, not Kevin Samuels in specific, uh, specifically, but just in general for like men's style and shit like that, mm-hmm. definitely up my game from how I was in high school. Cause in high school, it was like the same three hoodies, fucking, I was literally wearing the same Steph Curry shoes. Damn. Uh, I wore them. I literally beat them up so bad. Cause it was like. One of two pairs of shoes I had. Wow. That and I wore like the same six sweatpants. I never wore jeans in high school. I wore jeans like once in high school. Hmm. I was fucking bummy as shit. I mean, because mostly I didn't, I didn't want to impress anybody to begin with, but mostly because I didn't know either. Not only did I not know, but I wasn't really dressing to impress as well. Right. I right. probably should have done that, but. So now that you're of age, and let's say you know. Obviously, you weren't broke as shit, you know. You have, like, a specific... Have you figured out your specific taste and, like, style that you would like to wear? Uh, I mean, I would like to do, like, a very casual, you know what I mean? If I if I was going out to impress, I would go, mm-hmm. like, a button-up. No, not a button-up, but, like, uh... I'd go for, like, a Hawaiian shirt or, like, you know, something casual, some some khakis and and some shoes of choice mm. in my case jordans and i wear a couple like yo if i could actually had money i would get a fuck load of jewelry not not a fuck load but i get some rings i get you a get couple that cuban ring. link huh no i wouldn't get a chain i'm not a chain guy i get a couple couple rings because I, I like jewelry i like rings in specifically mm-hmm. i'd probably get me a watch watch or two maybe a suit as well like you said uh, just to look presentable. I don't have a suit man. right if, now. If I could, uh, if I felt it was appropriate, I would wear my suit every day. I really would. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah I look good in it. So, <laughs> best belief. Unfortunately, most uh, a lot of you know certain situations don't rec- don't call for uh, a suit to be worn. But yeah, and it's know. too hot where you're at. Um, actually, it's it's been cold the past week or so it's been like 60s 70s and stuff which is cold here obviously but yeah i mean you know anyway i like uh <laughs> i actually pay attention to men's fashion now so i'm actually very interested in it i downloaded uh the stitch fix app so that way i could like take oh, a look at like different oh so it's a it's an app specifically for tailoring clothes for you so you like put in your measurements and stuff like that you put in what your daily and weekly routines are and stuff like that. And it curates a set of, uh, a set of five, um, outfits for you. And like, depending on your style and stuff like that, uh, they're interchangeable. Of course you can like change colors and you can look at the stuff that you wanted. So it's basically like a, a loot crate type of situation mm. and they send it to you once a month. Um, So I'm trying that. My first month is free. I don't know how much the second month is going to be. If I had to guess for this specific service, probably going to be like $100 plus or something like that. Um, But I'll let you know after after I try it. But so far, the stuff that was in the box has been pretty dope. I got some really like preppy sweater sweater type stuff with like a V-neck. It looks really, really good on me. Um, I got some new khakis. Um, I got these khaki shorts and this like blue... uh, button up very casual like almost hawaiian type because it has like little palm trees on it Mm. um it's a great shirt it's it's super super oh my god like i want to wear it to bed it feels like a pajama shirt it feels like velvet on my skin or something like that bro it's so fucking soft uh let me see uh they also included two pairs of shoes in the box that i got oh Um, wow yeah 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 what is is like expensive yeah yeah (laughs) So, uh, and of course, if I don't like anything in the box, then obviously I can send it back. Um, 
came with belts, socks, underwear, and stuff like that. Like entire like five oh, wow. full of outfits and stuff like that. So um, really another good. one is very is uh, business casual. So it's like a another button up, very stiff collar, but it looks it looks good. Like if I flip it up, I look like fucking Seto Kaiba, bro. It's it's crazy. Mm. Um, <laughs> So and it's got like these uh, cufflink buttons that come with it that are that are gold and the shirt is burgundy so it's 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 a lovely mm. fucking shirt bro so I mean That's it's dope. A, yeah it's a cool service um might be depending on how much it is I have to get the price to you um but it's probably probably kind of expensive um, yeah so I think they have also I didn't look I was just kind of like going off the promo code that I have. So they gave me the free month, so they sent me five outfits. I think they have one where they just send you one, and it's like sixty dollars or something like that. So that's still pricey. I mean, for for one outfit, I mean. I mean, no, no, no. I'm just saying in general. Oh, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> for me. For me. For sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, you know what? If I get a promo code, I'll send it to you. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So, um. You just kind of, like, pick out your fit. I also got a denim jacket, which I don't wear, like, a whole lot of denim. Um, oh, yeah, I don't. I'm not a big denim guy. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. So, I haven't tried it on yet, but, you know, I may go somewhere this weekend and try it out. So, mm, you know, okay. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Getting a little shysty yeah, over there. Yeah, I'm trying there. to look okay. a little spiffy. I'm trying to look like I got some money, even though I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I'm not trying to, not trying to go crazy. Um, I, I feel that. I don't yeah, know though. Like, uh, if I got some money, I would probably be. I'd. I'd probably spend most of it into fashion. Hmm. To be honest, like shoes, clothes, accessories. I mean, there's not really much. There's not really much else that you would want to spend your money on. I mean, every now and again, you know, like actual physical objects is one thing, but. To have like something that you can wear, something that shows like, hey, I I earned this, like I I put the put my own clothes on my back. I mean, it's cool to buy like electronics and like cool shit and stuff like that, and LED yeah. lights for you know your ceiling and shit. But it's just like, uh, it's it's not enough for me. It's not enough. Like I have to spend my money on more than just video games now. So it's like, mm, I also yeah, have figured out that. that shopping at other stores is considerably cheap like like i go to ross and old navy a lot those are like my two old navy's pretty good yeah yeah those are like my two favorite ones that i go to um and bro i just i stay in the in the fucking say uh, like clearance section because they always be having okay. something dope so but you know now that yeah, i'm yeah. older i mean i have to i have to do something i i, I can't i can't continue to dress the way i've been dressing because you know, I gotta carry myself a little differently. Yeah, you know, of course. I'm about to about to birth somebody's babies at, at some point. Huh? Yeah, I'm actually a little afraid. I might from all the hoeing I'm doing lately. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm very nervous about like, oh, you're, you're what? You know, you're due when? Are you sure it's mine? Like that's something I never want to deal with. <laughs> Ooh. But like I'm, wrap it up, big dog. yeah, I'm slowly heading to. No, what are you talking about? Absolutely not. <laughs> raw sex is ah. raw sex is amazing. So, oh okay, that's your, that's your thing. I mean, only with the girls that are that I'm like close with. You know, like they've clearly been tested and stuff like that. Like these girls, very uh, because they're very close to me and I, I know them so well. It's just like they're. I don't think we're gonna. You know. Swap that. Now, if somebody gets something and it starts spreading around, one of my girls is lying to me. <laughs> also true. One of my girls is lying to me. I'm just playing. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but no, for real, for real, for real. Like, for real. Like, when I was actively seeking out new partners and stuff like that and trying to be hot on the dating scene because you know now that i'm full faithful i mean it's it's cool but also at the same time it's like i think the hardest part about having a real adult relationship is not just like communication but 
I mean, I've talked about this before is communication and comprehension, making sure that the other person understands what it is that you're trying to communicate. But it's also like, how do you tell your partner you're like, you're, you're either bored or something bothers you or you're irritated by something like, like presenting negative information to somebody that you only want to have positive moments with is really, really difficult. Like Mm. if you're having a situation with your significant other and you want to be open and honest with them, you're like, Hey, I saw this girl with a fat ass and I wanted to, you know, shoot my shot. You can't tell that to your partner. Hell no. Hell no. I don't know why you would, though. But I don't know why you would. But but when you've been in a situation with a partner where you can talk to them like that, you kind of, I'm not going to lie, man, it, you kind of miss it. You kind of miss it. Like, being able to talk to your significant other in such a manner where you can, like, get stuff off your chest with no repercussions whatsoever. But then again, you also have to be receptive to the things that they would say. So mm. I think that's going to be the hardest part for an ego driven man like myself, uh, you know, because I couldn't I couldn't tell my girl like, hey, you know what? Like I saw this girl today. You know, I thought she was really cute. Blah, 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 blah. You know, she had nice eyebrows, eyelashes. I could talk to my I could talk to my current girl like that. I could tell her like, oh, I saw this lady, you know, her eyelashes look great or her eyebrows look nice. Blah, 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 because it starts a conversation mm. with The girl I was talking to before her, she liked to hear stories. You know that, you know that line, uh, Kanye West, uh, says in, uh, I love it. What does he say? such a fucking hoe. Nah, 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 not that one, not that one, not that one. (laughs) Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Hold on. (laughs) No. Oh, uh. (laughs) She said, I like hearing stories. I like that hoe shit. He likes. Oh. She likes to hear the very, very intimate details of my thoughts and my day and stuff like that. Which I mean, I'm talking about voodoo. She was really cool. She was really cool about oh. that because she wanted to, you know, have these conversations with me and stuff like that. And she just saw people in a different way. So I don't. I don't know, man. Wasn't she know. a freak though? Oh, I'm sorry. That was <laughs> I I can't I can't comment on that. I can't comment on that. Fair. Yeah, no, nah, she was actually trash, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, she was oh. trash. Um, everything about her was trash. She's a terrible person. My girl now, though, she's amazing. Um, oh, so, okay. Yeah, she's the greatest I've ever had. So, you know. Oh. Anyway, next next conversation, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> so anyway, Dave Chappelle got swung on on stage, man. That shit was crazy. Can you believe that? I can believe that, and yes. And of course, you know, the media, they're they're running with the Will Smith narrative now. They're like, oh, this wouldn't have happened if, you know, uh, <laughs> Will Smith didn't go and smack Chris Rock. Because now apparently it's open season on comedians is uh, is what Joe Rogan said this week on his podcast. Um, Joe Rogan said that? Yeah, Joe Rogan was talking to another comedian. This a white guy. I don't know who the fuck he is because I don't pay attention to a lot of people like that. But he was another comic and they were discussing it. Uh, they were also talking about the Dave Chappelle incident. Uh Joe Rogan said he's been in that situation before where somebody has come on stage and swung on him, which has happened before. I've seen the footage, although he knocked the fucking guy on his ass. So that's the thing. There's no there's there's no amount of money. There's a couple of people I would never walk up on. And Joe Rogan is on that list of people I would never, never try to pull up on. Absolutely not. That that motherfucker will put my teeth in the back of my skull. Absolutely not. Uh (laughs) <laughs> there's just the no way like that yeah not no this motherfucker got like lightning quick kicks and shit like that nah man i'm cool i've never wanted to visit the moon anyway uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i just i wanted to visit the morgue either yeah no neither neither place sounds appealing to me to be honest so he said uh being in a situation where somebody had disrespected him and he was in the audience he knew as a comedian oh this person can't can't mean this seriously he's never been i don't think uh, from i'm trying to paraphrase here he said if he was in will smith's situation he wouldn't have known what he would have done uh but it's probably not slapped him on stage like on live television he probably would have waited until the set was over and you know had a very loud conversation backstage so I mean, I mean, I think that's what most people would have done, or most comedians, like, or most people who understand 
the point Chris Rock was trying to get across. Yeah, would 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 do like. Oh, you didn't mean it like that, but hey, man, just you know what I mean. With that Chill being out. said, Will Smith is a whether we like to say it or not. Will Smith, the rapper, and rappers have this thing about, hey, if you have an issue with me publicly, we're gonna resolve it publicly. So, which I think a lot of like actual people in in like media actually do. Like, if something is is presented as an issue publicly. We can solve it privately, but more than likely, it's going to get resolved the way you presented it. So if you, if we say you and I had a joke in the background, right? And we were making Mm -hmm. fun of, you know, let's say, uh, let's say it was, you know, Deacon or something like that, right? Yep. We can handle that privately if it was in a private setting. But if he were to come on the show and want to address that publicly, he's more than welcome to do so. So, Mm. I mean, you know, it all depends on how you handle a situation. I personally, once again, I've stated this multiple times. I think Will Smith did what what the fuck he was supposed to do. Um, Although I would have made that that slap a, you know, a fist. Like we would have been, we would have been scrapping. So, you know, I've had people talk about, you know, specifically my ex. I've been in very odd situations where somebody would disrespect her in front of me. I've had both situations where I did nothing and she gave me shit after or I did something and when we got in the car, she was like, that was not the right place, not the right time. So she gave me shit afterwards. So it's just like, it's subjective because it was it was her. Like, had it been, like, one of the other girls I've had a relationship with, it probably would have been different. But, I mean, you know, she moves the way she moves. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I uh, also agree with the point that if it was anybody else that was not Chris Rock, say like a Dwayne Johnson or or Joe Rogan, uh, Will Smith would not have done that. So uh, he picked his yeah, battle. So. He picked his battle wisely. So, and uh, this whole thing, uh, he was also talking about how people are using that as an excuse to uh, run up on Dave Chappelle. So this dude has his arm and leg broken in six or seven different places. Uh, we actually oh, yeah. have the we actually have the footage. Let me pull that up real quick. Hold on. Man, they uh, oof. yeah, they they fucked that dude up. They, they they worked him up. They made sure he looked like a goddamn contortionist at the end of that one. Yeah, that dude not walking no more, man. I don't. <laughs> His fucking arm was the opposite direction yeah. of where it should have been. That shit is crazy. So they fucked him up. I mean. To be fair, though, what I mean, what did you got... think was gonna happen? That's what I want to know. What did you think was gonna happen? You ran up on a on a comedian. But then, when you not only that, the actual like when you're actually looking at the footage, you can tell. And Joe Rogan said the same thing that I did. Uh, you can actually tell this guy has never tackled a person in his entire life. This guy has never had a physical altercation because the way. He tried to tackle Dave on stage was just like, bro, you've clearly no experience. You've never done this before. Why are you aiming for his ankles? Like, what is going on? Mm. Like, it's just, and then for you to turn and try to run away, where did you think you were going to go? Where did you think you were going to go? Yeah, I don't, maybe he thought there was a back exit. Uh, No, not at the Hollywood Bowl. Not at the Hollywood Bowl, man. That's. That's a venue. First of all, you can't even get out of the Hollywood Bowl in a car because the they do tandem parking. So they do. You take a ticket uh, and you you park your car, and where you park, somebody parks directly in front of you and somebody behind you. There's no. Ooh. It's a grid. There's no getting out. Like you have to get out in a line. So it's not even happening. What are you gonna do? Run out of the Hollywood Bowl? First of all, there's this long ass windy road. Like there's just no there's no exit for you here, buddy. They're fucking you up. Yeah, he uh he picked his battle very incorrectly. incorrectly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, hey, that listen, was... anywhere else, hey, he might have got away with it, to be honest. Maybe. Yeah, I don't I don't think so, but Yeah, I perhaps, don't think so either. You know what I mean? He had a, a slight more percent chance not to get his ass beat. Yeah, just a teeny tiny bit. So Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. I think um And this brings me to my next point that I really, really, really wanted to talk about was uh, Chris Rock's comment. Uh, (laughs) So Dave Chappelle made the joke 
uh, I'm sorry, not Dave Chappelle. Chris Rock made the joke while Dave was on stage. And he said, was that Will Smith? Now, that's so very interesting. Literally, I don't know if it's hours after or hours before this statement came out where he was talking to Dave and the conversation was leaked that he said, I got smacked by the softest nigga that has ever rapped. Now, I'm my thought process, and here, g- g- everybody listening, maybe you have the same question I do. If Will Smith is the softest person to ever have rapped, what does that make you? Because you let that man slap you. I mean, he just want, he's just a man who wanted his job. I, I guess so, but you let that man slap you. Don't go talk his shit now. How you gonna talk shit weeks after the fact? I mean... You let that grown man slap you. Don't go shit talking him now. Because you're gonna get slapped up again. Clearly. I mean, uh, the way I see it is, listen, if I get slapped and I'm the bigger man, I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna have a couple of jokes at least. Hey, man, you know. It's one thing to have a joke, but to be like... Was that Will Smith? You know, it's just like, all right, I, I don't all know. right. You think the joke is funny, but you just, you just look like a sissy. That's what it is. You just look a certain way. You look like, you look like the kid that was not able to handle his own fight, got beat up on the schoolyard, and then you wanted to talk shit afterwards. Like, did you not just get your ass whipped in front of everybody? Like, how are you gonna say the dude that? violated you publicly is soft you know what i mean Mm. clearly he wasn't because he walked up on that stage with millions of people watching television that night and slapped the shit out of you so rather you wanted to keep your job or not guess what now you don't keep your dignity or your respect so it is what it is you let a soft nigga slap you i just think the verb the verbiage is just wild just wild. Abs- the audacity for somebody I mean, to just... He's in a lose-lose, man. He gets, very he, lose-lose. He hits him back. Actually, no, that's not true. Could have shut the fuck up. Could have shut the fuck up. That's an easy, easy, easy pick. You know, you're not exactly in the position to, to talk shit. You know what I mean? Because you let it happen. You didn't retaliate, retaliate at all. You ain't make a joke after about it. You ain't, you didn't make a, a public statement, you know, saying, oh, you know, me and Will not cool. You know what I mean? Like, y'all hashed it out in the background and apologized to each other, and that was it. Y'all did the the adult thing to do. Cool. But don't go talk a shit afterwards, after you accepted the apology, after you've already shaken hands with the man. Like, you, you can't go around talking shit. Because you agreed to it. You not only let it happen, but you agreed to it. You agreed to the apology. I'm sorry. You just look you look ridiculous. So I mean, I, I'm just saying, I, I don't think Chris Rock is too hot on jokes as of late. Like the last, <laughs> the last one, last couple of night, like, you yeah, know, old Chris yeah, Rock true. jokes would have. Yeah, yeah. Or the, true. you know what I mean? You trying to say he's like, washed? Yeah. I'm not saying he's washed. I'm just saying they're washed. not hidden. Everybody has a bad season. I guess so. Can't can't win them all. I guess. I mean, Unless yeah, you're Dave I'm... Chappelle. But I mean, hey man, not every you can't stay consistent forever. I guess so. My guess... my opinion on it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, it is what it is. Like he he said his talk to shit. You know what I mean? Right. I, right. I don't. I guess whatever. I mean, he saw. I mean, I guess Will Smith is soft, but I don't. What does that have to do with anything? I, you still got smacked. He's still fun. Like he's now he doesn't have to go to a award show for ten years or whatever. Thank God. Yeah, he doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to waste his time anymore. Mm, Thank God. Yeah. So. I mean. Ah. You could be like at the I crib said, chilling, man. You'd be like, babe, the Oscars are tonight. You're probably talking to Margot Robbie. He's not talking to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fair choice uh, man so i mean you know then of I, course there's there's all these like weird rumors and stuff about them getting divorced and stuff but whatever Ooh, yeah it's probably not, not gonna happen will, will, yeah not with the way will smith thinks thinks Ugh. nah 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 
He's like, he's like yeah, a marriage for life kind of guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, which I, I, I actually life. really like that about him. I really fuck with that. Because, um, you know, when you share that, maybe maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the, you know, um, I don't know what the word for it is. Basically, like when you're somebody who just loves really hard and you just like really, really like have a deep connection with somebody and you've shared like the very bits of your soul with another human being and they've exchanged that with you with themselves and it's just it puts you on a different level so you're just like no matter what like i'm devoted to this person like this is my this is my partner so you know we may go through some shit they may step out i may step out you know there's only a obviously a certain amount of disrespect that you can take but it's like say you do take that disrespect can you walk that back can you walk it back mm-hmm. with your partner? And the real question is, would you want to? And I don't think most people would. I don't think most people would. I'm not. I'm definitely one of those people who would. Uh, yeah, I see yeah, the fi- yeah. I I hear the fire alarm. I start running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not running, but uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just leave. Right, especially for Will to put up with the last three years of ridicule that his wife has put him through. You know, without. I don't know if he consented to that or any of that, like if she had a prior conversations, but there's just something that's super strange about telling millions of people, yeah, I cheated on my husband for multiple years with this person who I was helping with their mental uh, issues and drug issues. Like he's my son's best friend and he was staying in the house blowing my back out when my, when my husband wasn't there. Like for you to tell millions of people that, I... I border, you know what? I, I Will Smith is better than me because I would have gone home and punched that bitch in the face. Yeah, yeah I really would have. Yeah. I would have been clocked out after I seen the. If I was, I would have clocked her. Imagine, imagine seeing the letter that Willow wrote. I'm, I'm. Oh, I'm that's yeah, yeah. That's. I'm getting the fuck out. I gotta I'm throw like, that little nah, bitch off no a bridge, way. bro. <laughs> I'm gone. Uh, like I'm in another, I'm in another planet at that point. Like, damn. Mm, wow. it, it, I don't know. It's it seemed very strange, but like I said, it's only only people who have astronomical amounts of wealth could ever have these kind of problems. True, true. Opinion. I think I think it being at a different tax bracket, you look at things differently, and you're probably like, yo, a divorce is probably way too expensive. <laughs> yeah, that is probably correct, actually. <laughs> so I will never understand these problems. I've actually, you know what, I saw. I, I, th- I don't know if it was on TikTok or Instagram or something like that, where this guy and his wife, uh, they had a, a pseudo type of wedding. And so they had the wedding ceremony and everything, and they had the rings, and then they invited people, did the whole wedding thing, right? The whole traditional shit. But they did not sign the marriage certificate. Mm. So, which is interesting, because... Without signing that marriage certificate, you don't have, at least I don't think you do, you don't have legal access to the benefits of being somebody's uh, marital spouse. So, like, insurance yeah. is not shared. Taxes. Uh, yeah, taxes, debt, uh, income, anything like that. Or, you know, a lot of the, the benefits of actually being married, you kind of lose out on those. So I'm not sure how that works legally, but I should probably ask I mean, my there attorney. There's a lot of freedom. There yeah. is a lot of freedom for it, though. Yeah, it is. But when you, if you know, in the event you split up, it's just like you know what's yours and you know what's not yours, and you take it with you. So it's yep. like, oh, okay. But I guess in the event of a split, you would like to be with somebody that's gonna be rational and hold you know decent conversations with you anyway and try not to be spiteful and they're taking the house the kids and the cars and all this other stuff but i, mean, I, I don't you know. if, if you don't sign a, the marriage contract you, what are you taking yeah exactly there's nothing to take like the only thing you'd have to do is uh ha- have a custody battle but yeah 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 the woman is most likely to win that which hopefully you know when you're with somebody rational and you could just you know talk that out like hey you know i'll get the kid on these days or whatever um i've seen couples be divorced and still live with each other so that for the sake of their child for like 10 years or something like that i think i saw this story i don't know if it was like on uh damn uh 
GTA showed it to me. It was like this guy who was, he was living with his ex-wife and was dating a girl, but they were living together because their son was too young to understand what divorce was. And so they agreed to stay living in the same house, but be separated for the sake of their son until he turned 13 and then explained to him that they got divorced and they would be separating. So, mm. which is interesting but you gotta really, like, you gotta really fuck with the other person, like, heavy to do some shit like that. Because if I got a divorce with a woman and we're living together, oh, you can take the kid. I don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't mean that. Obviously, I would want to spend time with my child, but I don't know. I, I would probably put up the least resistance possible just to get it all over with. Mm. We could tweak it later. But, like, for now, it's like, oh, you want to... You want a divorce? Because once again, as the factual state, the the statistics have shown, 70% of the f- people that file divorces, that 70% is usually the woman. So, you know, yeah. just, just going off of statistics because I think it would take a lot for me to divorce a woman. I think it would. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think so. I feel like the threshold for divorce is way further away than the threshold of me punching you in the face. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, okay. but... That is a, a strange statement. I'm saying I would rather punch you in the face than divorce you. Does that... Is that backwards? I feel like that's backwards. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Do you want a domestic suit or... Let me see. Like, would I... Or do you want child support? Ooh. Both sound bad. <laughs> one one most likely will lead to the other. So it's like, uh, you know what? I would rather divorce you than punch you in the face. There we go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. That's, there you go. Yeah. we. <laughs> you I, had to, I had to really think about that statement because I was like, wait a minute, what? Although, another statement I'll say, which probably a little strange. I would rather just up and leave instead of, like, continuing to do something with somebody. Like... Even if it's in a marriage, like, I'd rather just dip. I would just disappear. i just clock out. You know what I mean? So. I mean, isn't that's basically divorce anyway. Yeah, but divorce has, has to do with all the paperwork and stuff like that. I just, you'd have to track oh, me you down. Just, you're going you're gonna to end up like Jing from Hunter Hunter? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, got my son looking for me, taking all of these, uh, the, meeting all these strangers and shit like that, taking a cross country boat trip to f- come and find me. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Teleported a few times. Yeah, just don't, just don't find me, man. Just don't find, find me. Climbed up a giant ash tree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, just for you know. to be like, oh well, who are you, kid? I don't even know you yeah, like that. You don't even look like me. You traveled all this way for nothing, little man. Yeah. You need my phone. <laughs> you need to call your parents. They're probably worried. <laughs> you need sick a taxi. About you. Yeah. I could call one. Yeah. I'm not, I'm gonna not pay paying for it, it bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could call one. That's your taxi, young man. So, <laughs> yes, sir. But you know, I don't know. Hope you got cab money. Yeah. If not, you better you be shaking some ass to get home. Mm. That's not my son. I don't have to worry about him. How how he got here and how he goes are two different things, man. None of my business. Nah, shaking some ass for that is crazy. You would just shake some ass for a ride home. I don't think I'd do that. I probably would. I'll just walk. I'm not walking. I can't walk across the ocean. Oh, well, I'll find a way. I'm going to start swimming. Hmm. My Spanish <laughs> genetics about to be in full force. Uh... <laughs> he say, hey, Pablo, you got room for one more? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, man. A transatlantic trip in a fucking rowboat. <laughs> not even. I'm swimming the whole way. Fuck it. Uh, this man said, no it all. I only got to make it to Jersey. I'll be all right. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, hey, man, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, I know you wanted to talk about Ranking of Kings. How are you enjoying that? How are you enjoying that show? Oh, I, I finished it all in one day, bro. It was one really day? Good. Yeah. Ah, damn. Boji supremacy hit hard, huh? Bro, it was a great show. So, I, I don't know what to say, bro. For, was... for the people who don't know, what is what is Ranking of Kings? What is that about? It's, a, it's an anime. Oh. Ranking of Kings is a anime that is based on a blind and deaf 
child of a giant who is the uh, he's the prince of the boss kingdom and essentially he makes his journey he uh he go he wants to go on an adventure because he wants to be a great king mm -hmm. like his father but there there's a lot of twists and turns and shit and you know what i mean there's a lot of it dives into the the polit political world while also having that fun adventure it's a great show so i i really recommend it it actually was a tearjerker for me mm. and i definitely shed some manly tears a few Man, times i, I definitely did yeah i was definitely doing that mm. actually a great show though uh the animation is beautiful reminds me a lot of like if you like ghibli films mm -hmm. reminds me a lot of like that in a lot of ways but it's a great show hmm. i really enjoyed it i um i gotta say man i was not I, I had a couple of friends recommend that to me and i was like man i don't, don't want to watch this shit and my homegirl came over and she's like let me show you this anime and so we started watching it from the first episode i was like hey yo this shit is hype i love this i love this this is great anything with adorable children in it like as long as they're actually adorable, I kind of fuck with. So this, I felt the same way about Spy Family. Although Spy mm. Family was a little different because it was just like, oh, there's adults with adult issues. But Boji takes on a lot of things that he's not prepared for, and I love it. Yeah. So. How know. old? I forgot how old. Did they say how old Boji is? Boji's like nine. He's somewhere in between nine and 13 because I remember Dida is older Younger. than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember Dida is older than. 11 it's like 11 12 so boji has to be at least a year or two older than him mm. so you know damn. damn i i really enjoyed that show man i don't think i'll ever not ever but uh it's going to be a long time before i another uh, find another show that really pulls me in like that mm. from the jump i was actually incredibly surprised with how good it was it was definitely one of those that are... It, it's definitely a special one for mm. this this 2021, 2022, like, the last couple of years. I I don't think I found anything quite as special as that show. Mm. And, that's, I, I, and I've been taking a huge break from anime because I just found most of them to be really boring. I, or generic. Yeah, I feel you. But I, that's all I got. I mean, it's a great show. I recommend it highly. Mm. Definitely a strong nine for me. Damn, he said it's a tearjerker too. I'm not looking forward to these last couple of episodes. Uh, I the last the couple last... episodes are actually kind of dope. Oh, I just don't want it to be over. Is getting a is it getting a season two or? Yeah, it's gotta. Oh. I mean, they ended in a way that was season two esque. Oh, okay, for sure, for sure. Looking forward so, to if that we one. get another 23, it's gonna be great. It's actually gonna be one of the greatest shows. It's actually might be in my top 10. Top really, 15. it was that good. I really wow. enjoyed it. There's a couple things I did not like, but other than that, it was an excellent show. Mm, okay, I mean, uh, there wasn't really a character I disliked too much. There was like characters I didn't care for, but there wasn't a single character in the show that I wasn't able to see like their point of view. Like, like the villains even had, were very sympathetic, like easy to be sympathized, easy to sympathize with. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with my yeah, yeah. There The was villains were easy to sympathize with and it was just, it, it was a great roller coaster ride, man. I'll, I'll tell you that. I still need to finish the last two, three episodes, but you know, I'll have a full report last, next week. So. The last three are really good. Hmm. There's only one, one major problem that I, it's very spoiler esque, and uh, I don't want to get into it because it'd just be spoiling season two and and even most of season one. Hmm. But it yeah it was I highly recommend it. That's all I got. Yeah, I don't think we have a. I don't think we have. Anything else, man? We talked about Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace. Rest um, in power. Yeah, honestly, man, you know, it's been a slow week. I mean, it's only Monday, so, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. But 
Oh yeah, Kendrick, new Kendrick Lamar dropping. Oh yeah, Kendrick Lamar 15th. is dropping finally. Uh, I'm a yeah. little, un I'm a little uninterested. Just a teeny tiny bit. Uh, he dropped a new song. That was pretty good. Hmm. I enjoyed it. I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh, and then the other thing, uh, we could talk about it real quick. I haven't seen it yet. Um, Doctor Strange two. Apparently, people don't like it. Um, oh yeah, a lot of people don't like that. One. Yeah, have you seen it? Hell no, I'm fucking oh. poor. Okay, all right. Looks like we'll be watching it at uh, Casa de Movie Theater. <laughs> so, oh okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know what, man? It's it's interesting because the more people I see talk about it like i've seen people call it like a four out of ten a five out of ten and stuff like that um there's been a couple of eights out of tens it's a shame because dr strange one was one of the few movies i was very uninterested in going into the mcu like as it was continuing i think i didn't watch dr strange one until just before infinity war came out and it was mm instantly became my favorite like number one without questioning without a shadow of a doubt number one favorite marvel movie um so to see that people really aren't fucking with dr strange 2 kind of kind of bothers me and i think it's because wanda is in the way if i had to guess because i haven't seen the movie yet i think people i i've seen a lot on twitter that they say Wanda was the best part. Yeah, that she was the best. Um, but I mean, she probably you know. just had a more significant role than uh, in, in a Doctor Strange movie, which is strange. She probably should just get her own movie. Yeah, I think that's sounds, what Elizabeth Olsen you know. was saying. She said it wouldn't be. She doesn't feel it would be a series. It would just be one single movie. So, I I don't know where that's gonna go. I don't know how this is going to affect everything else in the timeline. Uh, it's come. It's Sam Raimi said in an interview, I believe it was with like IGN or something like that. It was one of the shitty gaming publications uh, oh, okay. that he actually did not see the end of Loki, and he also did not watch WandaVision all the way through. So. Oh, uh, for a lot of people, they said that explains a lot of what goes on in the movie. Uh, and a lot of reasoning is him not watching that original piece of content. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm going to see it this weekend. Uh, my girl wants to go because I have yet to find any good copies. I need I need my my international people. I need my international people to get it together. Okay, we're still... We need. I understand that COVID is winding down or whatever, but I need you guys to go back to pirating these movies, please and thank you. All right, I need my Captain Jack Sparrows out there, please and thank you. I'm trying to see this movie fairly, like within the seven days spoiler, because yo people are just dropping spoilers left and right, like it's just like it's just nothing, it, you know. That really is the worst when there's a new uh, new movie dropped. Like you got to mute a whole bunch of shit. Whole unnecessary bunch of too. words yeah. yeah it's it's not fun nobody wants to fucking do Motherfuckers that motherfuckers so. did that on day one of spider-man bro like that shit was ridiculous oh spider-man was muted three months in advance for me i oh, i knew I, yeah because i knew the uk was uh some some countries in the uk were getting it a day early um i think it was like london and like a few other major cities and countries were getting it early um so i just knew I just knew something was going to leak, something was going to come out, so I didn't pay, as, pay any attention to Spider-Man three months before it came out. And, obviously, you know, they were dropping Spider-Man clips everywhere. Like, the multi-spiders, like, landing on the, on the Statue of Liberty, swinging around, like, all of the edited clips that Marvel does. Like, all of that stuff was already circulating on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. So, that was really hard to avoid. Um, mm. I really feel like... The impact of that movie really lost its lost its actual impact because everybody knew all three Spider Men were in it. Like that would have hit way different. Plus, I didn't really care for Spider Man No Way Home like that. Honestly, like having all three Spider Men in the same movie was cool and everything, but I thought their interactions were just not enough. Like I, I felt like a lot of that stuff, the sequencing of the movie and the pacing was just not great for me i don't know i usually like spider-man movies but this one they was just, just had a lot to balance and yeah was... this one was probably the weakest one um but i mean i i get it it's 
they didn't want it to be like a Raimi Spider Man three. So I okay. I mean, All right. they just they just had a lot going on, and that in turn made it like a clusterfuck of a movie because you're trying to juggle so many plot points that you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Mm -hmm. And there's literally so much. There's like what two and a half hours of content, yeah. if not more. Just and about. it's like you kind of forget what the whole beginning of the movie foreshadowed, right? The whole, like, oh, everybody knows he's Spider-Man type shit. Yeah. And then it just turns into, oh, we have Spider-Man now? It's like, you kind of forget until when Doctor Strange pulls up out of the... He pulls up, and then he's like, oh, yeah, we got to fix this. I don't know <laughs> if you knew this, but uh, I know you were trying to beat fucking Green Goblin's ass, but... Uh, yeah, we got actually have to fix this now. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not necessarily, well, my expectations. Obviously, everybody, when, when it comes to multiverse and stuff like that, everybody had very crazy ex expectations for No Way Home and uh, Multiverse of Madness. But it's like, I was expecting... Sam Raimi even said this. He said he'd be open to doing a Spider-Man 4 now that the multiverse is a thing because he said anything is possible. Anything and everything. So with that being like the core of multi of the multiverse at this point, there is no fixing it, number one. And number two, the creativity should be able to go wild and it be acceptable. So Spider-Man No Way Home just felt very tamed to me. It felt very like. Well, you got to uh, think it's the beginning of that whole, I guess, this new era of where everything is. See, now we would like possible. to think that until we rewind a whole year ago. I'm sorry, two years ago, and we got He Who Remains and the entire fabric of the multiverse well, yeah. cracked open. So, you know, it's like we kind of had enough prep time so maybe like next year's movies like whatever comes out will probably obviously be you know because it takes a a year to write a year to develop a year to shoot a year to edit like yeah. you know conservatively obviously you can cut that down to six months each so either way it takes about two to three years to make a marvel movie from concept to finish uh in that two to three years time you end up with multiverse of madness which is the creative culmination of the Loki show and uh, all the stuff from No Way Home hitting the fan all at the, at the same time. I mean, I expect by now I expected the X Men to be alive and well and roaming around. I expected Fantastic Four. I expected in Shang Chi. Uh, I expected a lot more, especially because they introduced so many other side characters. I mean, Abomination is in the first ten minutes of the movie. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, a Hulk villain is in here? Like. The mm. shit so I, I was expecting that and i was also expecting a lot from this movie uh, but not so much that like everybody else was expecting like the fantastic four and uh spider-man to be in there and all this other stuff i just wanted old characters to be introduced as new characters like mm. the fact that when uh wandavision was airing i mean i wanted professor x to show up at the end I mean, I wanted Doctor Strange to show up at the end, too. But, like, apparently that was cut due to time and all this other stuff. And they couldn't get Benedict Cumberbatch to, to film in time. And so they digitally edited his shadow in, uh, like, six, seven months later after the show had aired. But that felt like a moment where the creativity was in the wind. And, like, you could allow a whole bunch of new stories to be told. And it just feels like we're very contained right now. It just feels like everything is still in test tube form. It's like, hey, it's real, but it's very, like, test tube -y. Like, we're not done cooking it yet. Like, we can't go wild yet. You know, she just got here. Can't go butt crazy on her. But, you know, just know she's here. She walked in through the front door. Let her get settled first. Honestly, I think shit's going to really pop off around the time the next Spider-Verse movie mm -mm. drops. I think that's when, uh, believe it or not, I think that's when the live action is going to start going insane mm. as well, right? Now with eyes on Miguel O'Hara, 
as uh as 2099 spider-man right mm -hmm. i think that's gonna give him like a little drive to maybe now we got that now that's a potential movie true you know true. what i mean maybe morbius can actually be a fucking good character you oh. know what i mean there's a lot of <laughs> things that can actually happen mm -hmm. uh with with into this oh, the new spider-verse movie because the, right. the animated shit while i love that shit uh i think that's gonna st spark up the creativity and the, the creative juices for the live action hmm. to get some good shit done as weird as that sounds right but i think around that time is when we're gonna see a big boom in like dope marvel movies hopefully with like some you know what i mean some flair to them and not the marvel formula right yeah I need you know um, I mean? some off off formula shit. I, you know I, I mean? was hoping that they were going to do when Morbius was going to come out. I was hoping they were going to do something a little different with that. I was hoping it was going to go kind of crazy and it was going to be um, a horror movie. That would have been that would have been pretty sick. Uh, I thought they were going to introduce Blade in there. I thought that would probably would have been a great time to introduce Blade. Uh, but I mean, you know, whatever. I, I don't make the rules, I guess. I don't make anything. Hmm. But, you know. Those are just some expectations I had, and with those expectations, I'm, like, looking at the further lineup with, like, Captain Marvel 2 and even Thor, Love and Thunder, and Guardians of the Galaxy, things that have, could potentially have huge ramifications on the rest of MCU, uh, the MCU going forward. It's like, where are we going? You know, like, I understand that we should have some chaotic shit, but... Also, so far in Phase 4, we've had very lackluster things. We've had Shang-Chi was kind of lackluster. Black Widow was mid. The Eternals, like, I, I forgot that even came out. I thought the Eternals didn't come out until 2024. That kind of just, like, went under the radar. Mm. And I say all this to be like, hey, I'm looking forward to Venom being in the MCU. I'm looking forward to Morbius, Kraven, Vulture coming back. I'm looking forward to an actual Sinister Six movie. Like, we got very, very close. I don't think we're actually going to get a Sinister Six movie at all. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't. I think No Way Home is going to be the closest thing we get to an actual Sinister Six. But that's probably correct. I mean, you know, whatever. I guess the, it's just the same people making the same movies all the time, man. We're just not going to get anything different until these people die in 30 years. So it is what it is, man. It is what it is, I guess. But I, I don't know. I like I said, man. I really think that when in, I think it's twenty twenty three when that that new Spider Verse drops, I think we're gonna see something. Uh, maybe a new Spider Man. Even uh, there's potential for it. I mean, that'd probably be later. But the mm. fact that people at worst gonna start giving a shit about these uh, these characters, these Spider Man. You know what I mean? Then mm. maybe we could see Ben Riley. Ooh. You know what I mean? The Scarlet okay. Spider. Shit like that. And maybe even Superior. I've been saying this forever. I'm going to keep saying it. Bro, you're not, it's not happening. You know it's I know happen. it's not happening, <laughs> but imagine a actual like R-rated Spider-Man film with Doc Ock as Superior Spider-Man. It's not happening. Bro. Just imagine it. Just, just, you know I what don't... I mean? Let's dabble with it. You know what I'm, I mean? I'm Let's imagining dance it. with it. I'm, I'm, ah, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. It. I'm imagining it, and it, it, it sounds like crap. It, it sounds terrible. Sounds terrible. Really? Yeah, man. You have to think about it this way. If you do a superior Spider-Man, right, you have to find someone who is going to be either a likable main character or be a main character that people want to follow. And superior Spider-Man is, is a tough character to sell. It's going to be very tough because he has to be likable, but not too likable. So that way he stays to the canonical material. You know? Well, it's honestly, just, his whole character is not like... <sighs> exactly. He's just very in the middle. He's just very in the middle. Like, no, no. He's just not like... No, that's what they're going to try to aim for, is what I'm saying. Like, oh. they would try to be like, oh, we oh, have to come up with a gonna, reason. They're going to muddle his shit. Yeah, he's yeah. Not gonna be, he's not going to be as dark and as gritty. He's cool as like a anti-hero side quest type of character who shows up here and there cool all right that would make more sense because then he's not a character that has to have intense one-on-one -on -one focus time with the audience so they don't have to like watch the movie from his point of view basically uh, give or take after a certain amount of movies if we just have a live action spider-verse right 
and he were to show up, then it'd be like he's a part of the ensemble. And then it's just like, oh, wow, I like that character. It kind of gives people something to to attach to just long enough to get attached, but not to be like to to get attached to a point where they overanalyze that character. Which is why, like, uh, I know, I know, it's painful. so crazy. Which is why we have this huge Spider-Man debate because we've spent so much time with Tom Holland in comparison to the other two Spider-Men who, honestly, at this point, seeing Tom Holland's trilogy compared to Toby's and, and Andrew Garfield's lack thereof one, I'm picking Tom. I've spent more time with Tom. I've seen Tom interact with more characters. I've seen him actually deal with the repercussions of his actions and the consequences of others. Andrew Garfield doesn't really have a chance to do that because he only has two movies, both of and which one of are... Them were, the second one was garbage. Yeah, and it feels like the second one is completely disconnected from the first movie except for the fact that Gwen Stacy is dead and Gwen Stacy's dad is dead. Like, what? Yeah. Other, otherwise, nothing really connects you to the first movie except for the fact that he's Spider-Man. Then you have the uh, Raimi trilogy, which connects very, very easily multiple characters, multiple themes, multiple people, multiple settings through one, two, and three. But then there's no payoff in a fourth movie. So it's like I never really get introduced to new characters too much. In Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3, except for Venom. The Sandman is technically an old character who was in Spider-Man 1 but was just forgot about. Uh, then you get uh, Topher Grace's character. You get him and Venom because I consider t uh, Topher Grace's Eddie Brock and Venom to be two different characters. And the way... Oh, yeah, that's the way I consider it. And the way Spider-Man interacts with these characters. Uh, you have the dark Peter Parker saga thing, which honestly... Could have just been him being, instead of dancing and changing his hair, he could have just beat up some guy or some lady or something like that. He could have did some really drastic shit, which even Sam Raimi in, a, in an interview this past week has talked about, was one of his failures was not making Peter dark enough, not showing an example of, of the, the horrible things he could do while he was in possession of the, of the black suit. So it was like... We missed some markers here, so I haven't really had time to see him interact with that many characters in multiple settings, except for Harry, but then Harry gets clapped in the third movie. Whereas Tom, I've seen Tom interact with all of the Avengers, his father-son dynamic with Iron Man, his, uh, his Aunt May dying, all of these other characters that exist from other Spider-Man movies, he gets to have one-on-one -on -one interactions. The craziest one was his interactions with Doc Ock, his interactions with uh, Green Goblin, like, him and Norman actually bonded at a certain point. I'm like, damn, like, is he getting to the Goblin? Only for only for the ending to happen, and you're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, this shit is crazy. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I feel like I can relate more to Tom Holland because I've seen more of him. So, you know, it... It is what it is. I don't know. I got really ranty there for no reason. I, I don't understand what yeah, the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, we, I don't even know what the topic is. We didn't anymore. even talk about the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Superior nah. Spider-Man shit. Yeah, but anyway, in order to do Superior Spider-Man, you would have to make the character somewhat likable for audiences to want to follow his journey. I know, but so. I, I, I don't know. We need somebody. We need a, a group or like a studio to just make a spin-off spin off R rated that's not directed by Marvel in any sort of way is just uh but I know it's not possible. Yeah, no. And that's the worst part because the Superior Spider Man comics are some of the best. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's such an interesting story because a villain has to to be in Peter Parker's body and he fucking knows the monster that is Peter Parker. Mm. He learns that, like, yo, he fucking rocks the... what? Is, I think he rocks the lizard's jaw. He fucking breaks it. In one of them. That shit was crazy. Yeah, when he was probably, like, oh, shit, I really could have murdered this guy. Probably could have uh, introduced that a little bit. And uh, that seems like a what-if probably would have tried to pull that off. But, I mean, you can still introduce that, that type of storyline even with... 
one of the other Spider Men now that the the multiverse is a thing. Yeah, so. but it's not the it's it's not the I don't think it'd be the same if you wanted to do like another Venom type thing, like how Venom would go crazy or whatever, and and to make it seem like the original three or mm-hmm. the original third movie. But I, I I don't know that perspective of Doc Ock being in Peter's body. It it was compelling. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because him learning all this shit, and he's just a fucking villain too, obviously, because it's Doc Ock, but fucking god damn, the shit he does, and even the story itself of Peter still being there, but just like, hey, <laughs> but you know not there. I mean? I'm here. Yeah, he's there, but you know what I mean? He's fighting for his body. Right. And then in, at the end of the comic series where he gives his body back, uh, Doc Ock gives it back. That shit was crazy. Yeah, well, hey, you know. It'll ne- it'll never come to fruition, but still still one of the greatest comics of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, that'll be tough. That'll be tough, man. I would love to see it, though. But Yeah, I would, too. Boys can dream, right? But, yeah. No cap. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be it for this week, guys. Um, it was a great show, you know, as they often are. Make sure you guys go ahead and click that like button. If you guys are listening to any uh, audio platform, we want to say thank you so much to all of our Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play listeners. Thank you guys so much. If you're watching the video version of this, I'm sorry. I was randomly clicking around on stuff, so I have to edit this. Uh, so you guys will see um, probably some gameplay or something. Uh <laughs> We want to thank you guys for listening, too. We also want to thank our patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting us every single week. If you guys would like to see our, uh, as we like to call our uncensored content, uh, our uncut material, the things that we don't talk about on the podcast, we drop names, dollar signs, all sorts of stuff that we uh, talk about like crazy um like crazy people excuse me go ahead and scroll down in the description there's going to be a link to our patreon uh but if you're too lazy to do that the link is patreon.com slash canon culture that's c-a-n-o-n uh c-u-l-t-u-r-e oh my god wow my brain is is fried i couldn't spell the word culture (laughs) (laughs) oh geez i need a nap man i'm so tired uh but we want to thank you guys for listening uh, Plank, you got anything you want to say before we get out of here, man? Uh, just thank you once again. Uh, we appreciate you for listening to these episodes, man. And uh, if you would like to, please hit us up on social media platforms. Links in the description. Thank you so much. All right. And with that being said, we will catch you guys on the next one. Make sure to keep it canon. <laughs>